Let's compare between these two companies and see which one is a better long-term investment if you could only pick one. First, let's see if either of these stocks have a good business behind it. The first set of metrics deal with the company's financial health, with its projected earnings growth for the next five years, its profit margins, its effectiveness, which looks at the company's returns on equity, assets, and invested capital, and then the employee value, which looks at how much the value the average employee adds to the company. You can see the values for each of these metrics as well as the points totals rewards in the bubbles. That makes it easier to compare the two stocks. The next set of metrics looks at the investment opportunity afforded to shareholders. Here we get the dividend yield, its payout ratio, which is how much of the company's earnings are going out to pay shareholders, and the cash and cash equivalent the company has in order to pay dividends, reinvest, and off the debt it has on its books. Again, you can see the values for each metric as well as the points given for each. This third set of metrics deals with the valuation of the company's stock based on its business. Think of the P ratio as a measure of speculation around the stock. We want them low. The PEG ratio adds earnings growth with the PE ratio. Then the 200 day simple moving average is the average stock price over that period. We want that low because it means we have a cheaper stock price. And then short float is basically how bearish other investors think of the stock. For these four metrics, we want the values to be as low as possible. That will give us a higher point total within the bubbles. And the fourth set of metrics looks into the other relevant data. First is the stock's performance over a set period of time. Usually it's 10 years, but if the stock doesn't go that far back, we go with the earliest data up to 10 years. The quick ratio is basically how easy it is for the business to pay off its short-term obligations. We want that high, so that's easy to get rid of those debts. And then Wall Street is the average consensus rating Wall Street analysts give the stock, from a strong buy of 1 to a strong sell of 5. Again, the better value gets a higher point total. Adding everything together, we can divide the total points by the maximum points awarded, which is 70. That gives us the business grades for both companies. This tells us which has the better business behind its stock. But of course, we can't forget about the fair prices of each company's stock. I use a discounted cash flow model, taking into account a 10% margin of safety. That gives us the fair prices for both companies, along with how many percentage points above or below the current stock price is. Here you can see the fair price grades for both to see which is more undervalued. Before we get to the final grades, join my Patreon and get access to every company I've analyzed so you can compare between all your favorite stocks. It's updated all the time. Go to patreon.com slash growthshares or click on the link in the description. Finally, we can put everything together and get the final grades for both companies. Adding the business grades and the fair price grades, we can see here the final grades for both companies. Now you can see which company is the better long-term investment right now. So what are your thoughts? Invest wisely, and as always, take care of your money.